Meet the Recruits, Creighton Blue Jays edition. That is Riley Davis. I am Brian Ralph. We're walking you through who we ranked as the top 20 recruiting classes in the country coming into this season. Uh, Creighton, not normally one to be in this mix, is in the mix this this year. A three-man class. Uh, it's headlined by Jackson McAndrew, a uh, 6'9", stretch four. I uh, was ranked as number 37 overall prospect, uh, and on three, a four-star prospect. Another four-star prospect, Larry Johnson, a six foot four backcourt guard. I uh, was also a top 100 prospect, just cracked it, number 97 in the on three rankings. And then Ty Davis runs out this class. He was a three star, ranked number 137, another six five wing. This Creighton team this season is going to be very experienced. These This trio seems to lead the, the bench and sort of the, the next generation or the next era of Creighton basketball. Um, overall thoughts on this class, Riley, before we dive in. I think there's two guys who right away with McAndrew and Larry Johnson look like they'll factor in. And McAndrew in particular, we'll get into him. I think he has a chance to start, whereas Johnson will probably slot in more as a sixth, seventh man. Um, But it's nice to see for a a Creighton team that, you know, has produced some sneakily electrifying freshman. Um, I think yeah. I go back to Ryan Nimhart and how good he was his freshman year and sort of came in as a top 50 kid, four star, um, despite, you know, being the starting point guard for a Montverde team that won a lot of games in high school. And then I think that year after uh, Nimhard got hurt, they handed the keys over to Roddy Andrew Scavilli, probably butchering that name. But, you know, because in my mind and in, in recent years, we've seen more veteran dominant Creighton teams. I think like, oh, does McDermott really turn the keys over to, to freshmen? But I think, if you dive dive a little deeper, he has a he you know has had some success doing that. So uh, if I was a Creighton fan, that would make me a little more bullish on just the abilities of of McAndrew and Johnson in particular to get on the court. Yeah, it's a talented trio. Certainly, we have them ranked 16th on our sleepers consensus. We all submitted a ballot. The consensus came out to them being the 16th best class in the country. I had them at 15. You had them at 20. So we kind of all all have them right in that same area, the the bottom half uh, of their sixteen to twenty. Does that feel right to you? Uh, this ranking of sixteen for Creighton, the same good range. Yeah, I would say you know the reason why I was slightly lower than the rest is because even though I I like these two freshmen and I think Ty Davis is a good long term piece uh, as just a pure point guard with size. It's neither one of these guys are going to be a star. And, you know, I just knocked them a little bit because they both sort of, I would say have like an uphill battle to climb to, I mean, maybe an uphill battle is too strong, but you know, they have to, I would say like be on their, their best game and beat some incumbent uh, incumbent blue Jays out in front of them to, to earn those starter minutes. They do. Yeah. They certainly do. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into each of the three. We'll start with Jackson, Jackson McAndrew, excuse me. Um, he's the headliner. He's the guy who was a potential starter for this team at 6'9". He provides some versatility. He fits the bill of uh, the Creighton offense with his shooting ability. He is a, the one note I have for him right here uh, is just shooter with like 10 O's. He is he is a knockdown shooter um, at 6'9". I think that's going to allow him to play a pretty big role right off the bat. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. And it's not just the Creighton mold of like stretch four. It's also like the white guy named Jackson Creighton mold. Like it just, <laughs> you watch him play and it's like, okay, this dude is going to be, you know, like an Ethan Roggy type. And I see, I see the vision for why, you know, McDermott made him a priority and ultimately got him to Omaha. But uh, I think his best attribute is just his ability to pick and pop. I'm assuming that's going to be the majority of his shots. And maybe he can, you know, I think he's, at least at the EYBL level, he he showed some ability to put the the ball on the floor and to be a pretty smart passer. Um, it's not the kind of guy you're going to run offense through, but he's he's not like a he he's not completely incapable of dribbling. But I would still I would still assume it's going to have more three point attempts than two point attempts on the season. Seems like that's going to be the case, particularly earlier in his career, as opposed to maybe later on as he develops some. There is some physical maturity that I, I think has to happen with most freshmen, right? That that's gotta be there, but his shooting is going to allow him to be on the court right away. I don't know if he's going to start. Um, th- there's a pretty good chance that Mason Miller starts at the four, the way that Creighton likes to go mm-hmm. small. And also the fact they brought in a uh, Jemiah Neal and pop Isaacs next to Steven Ashworth. I assume the three of those are starting. Mason Miller had a big role on, on last year's team. But McAndrew, I think gives them a more traditional four man, than Mason Miller. So at, at the very least, 
Yeah, it's going to give Coach McDermott some options there, depending on, again, perhaps how ready McAndrew is and, and what the opponent is doing. Let's talk about Larry Johnson now. He's the the other top 100 prospect, uh, six foot four, really good athlete, going to be, uh, I think, next in line on the perimeter. What kind of role are you expecting from him? Yeah, like I said, I could uh, I could see him being the first guard off the bench. There's not a ton of competition uh, ahead of him for yeah. that. Um, even let's say, I mean, you could conceivably start Mason Miller at the three, McAndrew at the four, and you're really only looking at Jemiah Neal as the sort of guard wing prototype to mm-hmm. steal minutes from him. But yeah, you hit you hit the nail on the head with the athleticism. I think his ability to get in the paint, finish above the rim, um, those are all what stand out to me. You know, he played I think in the the overtime elite league, so he's. Uh, comes from good competition as well, even if he's not, you know, quite as quite as touted as Jackson McAndrew. He's still a, a top seventy five guy. What is on, on, I believe on three has him on three has him at ninety seven overall, ninety okay, seventh so, overall prospect, top one hundred kid. Yeah, top one hundred per on three. I know twenty four seven and ESPN are both a little bit higher on him. Um, you know, if if you could get five points per game out of him and anywhere like maybe a fifteen to seventeen minute per game role, you'd probably be feel, feeling pretty good about his trajectory. Yeah, and and with how wide open Creighton offense is and the shooting that's going to be around around him, it's not the same kind of shooting they had last year, but the kind of spacing you expect from a Creighton offense, he's going to have those lanes to attack and use that athleticism around the rim. Um, should be a fun guy to watch in transition as well. That brings us to Ty Davis, uh, who is the the third uh, of the trio, ranked one thirty seven of the all um, six foot five, also going to be on the wing. I think there's a role for him kind of at the end of the bench because of the lack of guard depth. Like he's, he's the fifth backcourt guy essentially right. that could get in the mix here. Um, I don't know how big it's going to be, but I do think he'll be in the rotation. What can, what can Creighton fans expect from this guy? Try to hold on to him for a couple of years and keep him out of the portal. Cause I, I like the long-term upside again, he's six, five and has a really good vision and he's that pure floor general type. And you know, maybe the six five is self reported and he's a little bit smaller than that or something, but still it looks like he has pretty good size. And um I I like taking the flyer on him as a long term piece. He certainly isn't gonna it's it's not gonna hurt you to use like your twelfth scholarship on him. Is there a one and done player among these three? I know that's the hot topic with every freshman class is if if somebody's gonna be that good or they go to the NBA right away. Um any of these guys you think could could potentially broach that? I don't know. Like, I think you hit on it with McAndrews. He's just skinny and needs to, you know, he needs to bulk up some and keep that same mobility as far as being able to relocate and find the window in the defense and knock down open shots, prove he can hang on defense. If anybody, I would say he's probably the the candidate, even with like Johnson's athleticism and the, you know, the burst that he has that maybe sets him apart from some of the other guards on the team. I just don't think he's quite refined enough on that end. But yeah, I, I mean, maybe... Best case scenario for McAndrew, he could be a two and done type of guy. Crayon's had some success with guys like that who, you know, stay two or three years and go to the league. And think of Tyshawn Alexander, for example, as a guy who sort of turned himself in a pro and into a pro in a couple of years at Creighton. Yeah, I, I don't think there is. McAndrew, I think, is the one who could get some buzz if he goes a month where he's shooting like 42% from three, averaging 11 points. Um, I think he's somebody you could easily see draft Twitter kind of falling in love with and, and being uh-huh. one of those more upside, more upside guys. But I, I don't think there's a one and done prospect here. All very good players, but are more, I think program guys and guys you can expect to stick around college for a little bit, as opposed to uh, immediate surefire NBA prospects. So who's the best one this year? We're going to, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the best career in a second, but immediate impact right away. Who's going to have the biggest impact. I mean, I think it's got got to be McAndrews and, uh, he will excuse me, McAndrew. At, I won't make it. You want to add that S on there? Yeah, that, that sounds S better. There. Uh, McAndrew family, if you're listening, just hit, hit the hit the uh, hit up your local government, you know, get the name changed to add the S. I promise no one will just notice, your local but... U.S. government official. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to remember the name of like the name changing office that you go to that you know when you get married and your wife changes your name and everything. Can't recall it off the top of my yeah. head, but yeah, us um, us two men are not going to know that, but our wives yeah, will very right, much know right. what that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, my my like bold my bold take will involve McAndrew. I think he's the best of the group. I think he is too. I think he set up to have the biggest impact just with with his shooting, and again, somewhat somewhat of a positional need with, with that four and the option there. I, I think he's the option. 
best player, uh, best career though of, of this group. Is there is, you going with Larry Johnson or Ty Davis instead? I'll still stick with McAndrew. I think he's the, the best of the group. I think he has the most NBA potential. And yeah, I think probably a better good chance you get like three ish years of him. I would I would set the over yeah. under at two and a half and take the over for how many years he plays in Omaha. I think he's a three or four year guy as well. Like I think he's that sweet spot when you're a program like Creighton who relies on three and four year guys. You get a a, a highly touted recruit who can come in and contribute right away, but he's not like NBA ready. He is a true like college player and see what happens after that. Um, mm. McAndrew is that I expect him to be very good in Omaha for for several seasons. I expect Larry Johnson too uh, as well. Ty Davis I think will make an impact big impact later in his career. I expect Larry Johnson had a very good career, but McAndrew to me is, is the guy to build around. Certainly. This is the fun one. Who's the biggest disappointment uh, of this group? I guess I'll, I'll lean Larry Johnson just because there's a chance that he ends up being one of those, those players who looks great on a mixtape because he can, you know, soar, but he never really puts it all together on the basketball court. I could see that. I went with Ty Davis just because of kind of what you mentioned before about trying to keep him out of the transfer portal. He's somebody to me who, you know, is going to pop up in two or three years playing for some SEC team or some Big Ten team. Really? Wow. And that high like, oh, upside, huh? That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think someone bets on the upside. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know Ty Davis personally, obviously. Um but to, I, I don't know if he's somebody who's willing to stick around kids this day, you know, with the unlimited transfer rule, you don't need to stick around. You can see what's out there for you uh, as many times as you want to with him potentially being the guy of this, of these three, that is the odd man out this year. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if other programs uh, just came knocking and wanted to, to gauge his interest and in potentially playing elsewhere. Um, so that's why I have his biggest disappointment. I like all three of these guys though. I, I don't think there's a true, like, he underperformed in his college career. I don't think there's one of those guys uh, in right. these three. So if there's a biggest disappointment, I'm going to look at the the one who I think has the at the most risk of transferring out. And for me, that's Ty Davis. Either way, Creighton, you got yourselves a pretty good group. You know, we, we didn't talk about any of these guys as starters because your starting five is pretty solid and locked in. If you can get two of these three to contribute in a big way off the bench this season, I think that bodes very, very well for you and your chances this year. Can I give a bold prediction? I'll close with this. I think yes. it's going to be Mason Miller at the three and and uh, McAndrew at the four by like late ju- late January, early February. Just with Jemai and Neil is, I mean, he's never shot above twenty nine percent from three, and you got to be able to, you got to be able to shoot in a Greg, Greg McDermott offense. You know, maybe yeah. you look at Arthur Kaluma who maintained big minutes there, and he was never a high level shooter, but on the on the perimeter, I don't know. McNeil, uh, I think Jemai and Neil is going to have to do a lot to sort of cover up um, just his, his inefficiency from downtown. It may get to a point where you're playing either pop Isaacs or Neil, and you're going to play pop Isaacs. The starter minutes over Neil. I don't hate that. And then you roll also with a lineup that has six, nine, six, nine, seven, one and Ryan Kalk runner. That's not terrible. Yeah. And not to mention, sorry, I don't want to get us too off, off the rails here, but any sort of, we're off the rails. Issues, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any sort of defensive <laughs> issues you have with Miller and McAndrew, which I'm sure will exist, you happen to have like the best rim protector in the country uh, to yeah. clean up all the mistakes. So, yeah, that's my bold prediction. Sticking with it, it's definitely going to be toyed with. It's definitely going to be toyed with, and I'm excited to see what impact McAndrew can have, and the other guys can have too. It should be a, a fun season for Creighton. All right, you know what I love about you? That I'm handsome. You're reliable. I can count on you. You know, honestly, you remind me of Aaron Henry a little bit. Remember when, like, you know, their back was against the wall. Nothing was going right. And man just showed up every day. He didn't make excuses. There were no problems. There were just solutions. Sounds like me. That's you. And it also reminds me of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Because if you're looking for quality furnace repair, look no further than the heating and air experts that you can trust. Comfort and quality are their standard. They're an HVAC company that serves Northeast Indiana and Southern Michigan. Whether it's heating and air conditioning, plumbing, kitchen and bath remodeling, or emergency services when you need them most, Duncan Mechanical Solutions has reliable service that you can count on. Cart, remember when your basement almost exploded? 
I remember when my basement almost exploded. I remember when my, my furnace itself was acting funny. I remember when my AC was acting funny. I wish I had Duncan in my back pocket. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I've never been anywhere in northern Indiana or southern Michigan that hasn't been perfectly cool or perfectly warm, depending on when the day called for. And that's because of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Uh, they are the presenting sponsor for the month of July. Shout out to Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Go to DuncanMechanicalSolutions.com to learn more.